This is the final result of our shooting scene and we will achieve this today. So we will add some sounds as you can already hear. We will add, add HP to all the characters and we will add shoot mechanics and a particle effect. So let's go. Let's start with the sound. I've downloaded two sounds files, two sound files, one AK and the other one is a shoot. Let's go back to our player script and add some audio sources. So public audio source audio clip AK and audio clip shot. Back in the editor we now see those two slots here and we just drag and drop. In our player script we add two variables called audio clip AK and audio clip shot and they are both audio clips. Back in the editor we just have to drag and drop our audio in the audio slots and then we need another component called audio source. Here we should just have a look for 3D sound. Here we just should have a look for partial blend. We will set this to 3D because we want a fully 3D sound. Back in the code we will look for this shooting. So the animator will set a trigger shoot and we will say if cooldown smaller or equal to zero then we will shoot based on our current weapon if input if animator get bool ak equals two we are equipped with the ak otherwise we are equipped with a pistol when we are equipped with the AK, we should um, say audio source player and it's not known. So the cooldown is not known and the audio source player. Let's fix it. So a protected float cooldown and a protected audio source audio source player and we will fix this by saying get component audio source and then we know it's not null uh, because we just added it in the prefab and then we can say play one shot and this doesn't mean that it's a bullet shot it means just play it once and then forget it. Um, we have the audio clip AK here and on the other hand we have the audio clip shot and we have to set the cooldown. The cooldown for AK uh, should be 0.2 seconds and the cooldown for our gun should be about one second and we should always decrease our cooldown by time delta time. This means uh, we can um, click on shoot and uh, the animator is always triggering the shoot but we will just have a cooldown of 0.2 maybe we can set this within the bracket it makes more sense and uh, the AK is obviously faster than the pistol. Now we should check where the player is actually shooting. Imagine this is a player and he has a gun and the gun is pointing here because this is where you are uh, crosshair is aiming at and you do not want to always shoot a straight line you want to have a greater or a radius where a bullet might be shot and this radius should be greater with a AK and smaller with a pistol. We will call this uh, shoot a variation and this should be unity engine random inside a unit sphere just one point pick it up there and we will multiply it by a factor the factor depends on which weapon we are using so for AK for example this can be 0 0.2 and for the pistol this is 0 0.1 so we have to multiply it right here multiply it there and then we have the shoot variation then we need the shoot way this is the way we will actually cast. So how does the array look like? Um, we have an origin. This is maybe vector 3 up 
um, of course we should say transform position plus vector three up. We go one unit up, or maybe one point. Oh, one is one is okay. Or maybe one point five. This means one meter and fifty centimeter above the ground is our start position of the bullet, and we then go just uh, transform forward. But this means we always have a straight line. So we will just add the shoot variation. So our line is not always straight. Okay, now we have to detect if we hit anybody. Do we hit anybody? We just uh, create a hit info and say ray cast. This shoot ray um, should be casted as long as it goes. So the distance is the max value of load. And we will uh, want the hit info to be one of our outgoing parameters and if this is true we will check uh, if hit info uh, collider get component player is not null but we want to uh, do something with the player so we just um, check it this way assign it to a local variable and say player on hit so now we know that the player is hit in this player script and this is perfect okay now we can create this and the player knows okay I was hit and if this is the case we say HP equals HP minus 10 okay what is HP is this the variable we do not uh, we haven't added yet so protected HP it's maybe an integer and on awake we say HP is 100 so this means we need 10 hits to really kill our enemy and uh, we could also pass, for example, the weapon we are using, and um, depending on that, we will add more or less damage. And if HP is smaller than or smaller equals to zero, then the player will die. And here we have the die method. We will say, okay, activate the rector mode, and we will ask uh, or say public is bool is dead. We do not need a separate variable for this. This is just for the information purposes. So we will say, okay, this should be a only get method. And we will return hp smaller equals to zero. Okay, how can we use this? Oh, this is always updated as soon as hp is updated. So we could also say, if the player is dead, he dies. So, and we will activate the active vector mode here. And we can also um, activate particles here. Okay, let's better go back in the editor. I want to go to the scene and I will add a canvas. Add UI canvas. I will use the scale with screen size and the HD resolution and match maybe the middle. And then add a simple text. This text should be positioned here. So I hold Alt Shift, click here and then say, OK, it should be on the bottom left and maybe red to really see it better. Maybe font of 50, say 100 of 100 HP. There we go. Not nice, but it should work. And we will add a script. And this is what a script looks like. We will have a reference to the player. This is our player and the protected text. So we will get this by saying get component text. The player is a little bit more difficult because we will say find object of type controller. We know there's only one controller in the scene, even though there are more than one player in the scene. And we know that this, this one controller also has a player script and this must be the player we are controlling right now. So I have a reference to my player and text and I will update the text with the player HP. HP is now inaccessible due to its protection level. So I hit F12 to go there and say, oh yes, this should be public. And now it says you can't convert to type string from an int. So we say to string. And that's it. Normally you shouldn't update it any for every frame, just on changes uh, to save performance. And you should use Text Mesh Pro, but just to keep everything simple, I will leave it like that. Okay, let's go to the player. 
Um, this is a player prefab, so I will add a effect particle system. There we go, this is a particle system. It should not play on awake. The emission should be zero and we want a burst of maybe 20. The shape of the emission should be a sphere. In general, the whole shape should be here. The lifetime should be 0.5 seconds. The du duration should be as well 0.5 seconds. It should be affected by the gravity. And the start color should be maybe red. And there we go. You can make way more beautiful things. Just look at particle systems tutorial because this will be enough for us. Ah, and make sure you do not loop this so that we only hit play. In our player script we just reference the particle system. There we go and here get component particle system and when we got hit here on hit we will just play this. Particle system play. Let's fix some errors with the text. Um, we should also add for example by 100 HP so it looks better. And make sure to say get component in children because the particle system is not directly on the root. Other than that we need some kind of uh, crosshair. I'm completely lazy here and say text, set it in the middle um, or maybe over the whole screen. Just say OK, I will center everything and just type an O or an X or maybe a plus. Plus is very good. Um, text size of 28 or a nostalgic Counter-Strike green, dark green, I think it's... And here we go. Just grab a weapon and go for it. Okay, we are shooting him and we got hit by the other. So, and I'm dead, I'm deader than dead. You see, uh, I have negative XP, but I can still play. We have to fix that and I can't shoot the other one. I think uh, my range is too big. First of all, in the controller, I say get mouse button zero because I want to um, be able to hold my button and shoot as long as I want. In the player I want to detect if is dead. Then I want to do, do return and do nothing. And the same counts for here. I don't want to update anything. If I'm dead I will just return. To apply some damage we will add ragdoll physics to our, ta our character. We won't make it too fancy because I got already a tutorial out there how to make proper rectals so uh, we will only go for the main parts so for example we add the rigid body <coughs> and the character joint to our upper arm and we will add a collider uh, maybe a capsule collider is a good choice pretty big face it to that direction no x direction some kind of why this looks good so so this is an okay uh, position for our collider um, I will add these at the right shoulder and the feet so this is what it looks like after I placed all the colliders and now I have to make sure that I use the right uh, hierarchy I also added one to the spine but I do not need the character joint here just a capsule collider and a widget body. Now I select everything um, that has the collider or where I added the collider and I set the connected widget body to the uh, root, so the spline here and uh, I go just for the default settings that these are uh, quite sufficient for our case and I will add a script called player Ragdoll. These are the properties. Let's go through them. We will get the animator, the animator of the player that plays the animation, obviously. The widget body on the highest level. The collider on the highest level. A reference to our player script. All the colliders in our children. And the widget body of the children. And also here the widget body is contained in the list. We will add a method called Rectal set active and it will get an active. So let's first start with the children. 
So we will enable all collider if the vector object active is true and we will um, also detect collisions on our rigid body. And we inverse is kinematic, so this is not active. Uh, if the vector should be active, the is kinematic flag is not set. And we will do the reverse for the parent. So if our vector is active, we do not want that the collider is enabled or the rigid body detects collision or the animator or the player script is enabled. Uh, the player is completely dead. So he won't uh, react anymore and we want to detect or say uh, is kinematic is false um, so that he is just a vector. The only thing that's left is to say get component player rectal rectal it's not visible because we do not set it as a public method this is the only thing left and now it should be there it is set vector active two and maybe on awake we can or maybe on start there we go we say set active false um, and yeah we can we could also the, th the thing is if this is called or if, if I set it here, that can mean that this is called even though we do not um, process the awake. So uh, if this is the case, we can just ask if animator, for example, is null, we can call awake. Just that we make sure that these references are there. So, and now we do not have to care about the script uh, order execution um, because it can be sometimes messy. So now you really make sure in your code that this is called before this is called. Uh, called. So one thing I noticed is that the shooting does not work that good. So sometimes I get a hit, but most of the times it's just shooting anywhere, but not where exactly I want it to be. So let's change the shoot behavior. So this is only one solution. You could have many of them. Um, now as the input, I have a shoot and a look, a one, and that's all. I would I would change this to um, say, okay, vector three, uh, shoot target. Um, shoot, we will, we will still need it. And a shoot target. So. And I think this is more accurate, uh, accurate than the shooting that we now have. Because now our ray starts here, which is okay, but um, I want to change the direction. Um, the direction should be the shoot target. So input shoot target minus transform position. Let's let's put it in another variable, shoot origin. So this is shoot origin. And this is uh, shoot target plus the shoot variation. We will still need it. Uh, minus the origin. And let's put that in a different variable. So shoot direction is this. And we will normalize this because it's only direction and set it to here. So uh, now we have to change our controller. If we want to shoot, we have to set the target. So for the shoot, we will cast away. So physics way cast. We're starting at the camera position and going forward from there. And this is our hit info. And so if we hit something, we say, okay, player input shoot uh, or shoot target equals hit info. Um, let's say it's collider. Yeah, the other collider. So, and if we do not hit anything, we just say, okay, uh, the shoot target is just shoot in the air times 1000. So. Um, it doesn't matter anyway because we, we already checked if we hit something and if we do not hit something we could also just shoot in the air. Um, and here of course collider or point.
So we could say collider.transform.position, but we can also say hit info point. So this is how we set our shoot target in the player. Let's add it to the enemy as well. The enemy, it's a little bit um, easier because when we shoot, da, 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 let me have a look. Yes, it was here, but I decided to make it dependent on the state. So if the state is shoot, then we shoot. And if player input shoot, then we do the following with a player input shoot target equals um, the player position. And there we go, we have the controller here, say controller transform position and maybe we add a vector 3 up so that we do not shoot at his feet because this, this is a position of his feet and uh, this is a position of his torso roundabout a little bit higher okay let's have a second look at it um no here it has to be the shoot origin so the direction is always a target minus the origin normalized shoot variation let's try it now let's come to the darkest chapter of this tutorial it's getting so serious that I turned on my face cam right now because now it's getting really dirty. I spent countless hours on finding out why the shooting doesn't work that properly. I drew lines all over the place and I, I, I was like, okay, the, the code should work. I added up debug features and tried to figure out what's wrong. And yeah, this is the footage. And the error is right here. You can slightly see it. 2018.3.0. And this was the error. Because the only thing I changed is this one. 2018.3.6. I just updated Unity because Unity had a bug with this Waycast feature. The Waycast does simply not work. It, it doesn't detect the enemy. I shoot a Waycast through an enemy and hit the wall always and I was like okay but I shoot in this direction I have to affect the enemy and sometimes it works and sometimes I restart the game and it didn't work so and I don't want to, to just um, deliver it to you and some of you complain okay it seems to work sometimes it's not quite right so yes I figured it out um, I added some lines for debug but I guess the uh, code in general still remains the same. Um, and yeah, so uh, this is why I have some final commits in the GitHub repository. But finally, yes, it works. I can shoot the enemy um, and everything is fine. So yes, always, if I think uh, it should hit, it will hit. And even I can die here. And that's it. So that's the end of this tutorial. There are no further videos coming out on this series because I want to keep my tutorials straight to the point and still short. And I think these are five or six episodes. Yeah, and you can request uh, new scenes or new tutorials. Uh, I will try uh, to make a series out of five or four uh, different episodes to create one single scene because everybody can start uh, following a tutorial it's not that long and the problem is if I make one specific tutorial you sometimes need to build things up like a character controller until you finally reach a point where are some things that you really want to show and that you really wanted to teach and many things are just repetitive but I don't want to spare them out or just give you a finished scene. So this is a format. You can um, leave a comment down and say what you think about this new format. And you can, of course, uh, request new videos or new scenes that you want to see. Subscribe to my channel to get more straight to the point tutorials.